waterproof jacket, underwear, long sleeve shirt, socks, two headlights, two oranges, battery banks with chargers, GoPro 360. I got two roll mats, two tents, a sleeping bag, two waters, my clothes. Drone, water, tripod, GH5, lenses, turns pro for time lapses. A film camera, extra rolls of film, battery, SD cards, and a tripod. You're bringing a toothbrush? Good morning. Today is an extremely peaceful day in the marina. We've been waiting for this weather window all week and we thought that we'd missed it. But today is the perfect day. It's full moon. What we're doing today is we're climbing Pico. <laughs> Anyways. This is the story of Delos, a sailboat that's been cruising around the world for over a decade. I jumped on board 10 years ago, not knowing that one day I'd be stepping up as captain, with my girlfriend and first mate by my side. Over 50 crew have called Delos home, and that tradition of sharing the adventure continues this season as we write the next chapter of the Delos story during a lap around the North Atlantic Ocean. If you enjoy Delos videos, please hit subscribe. It's a fast and free way to keep our journey going. The nature park people gave us permission to go up and sleep at the top. And there's only 33 people, I think, that are allowed on the top of the mountain um, to sleep overnight in the crater. So they managed to find a space for us, which is so exciting. We've all been wanting to do this for so long. As soon as we got here and saw it, we were like, we have to go up there. So we've found, finally kind of found a plan because we were going to try and climb Pico, but you have to, one, you have to book and two, the weather's, the weather wasn't good, it is now, but. So we've kind of found a mission. We're going to go and try and learn about how these islands were formed through volcanoes. Before we could attempt to climb the highest peak in all of Portugal, we wanted to know how these islands were formed in the first place. Our mission for the day was to head for the Volcano Museum here on Fayal, which ironically enough is actually an old lighthouse that was buried by a volcano in 1958. When Pico had nearly achieved its present size, Bayal began to form the peninsula of Capello. The peninsula grew in different phases. All of them were the consequence of sub-area basaltic visceral volcanic activity of the Strombolian and Hawaiian types. Whoa. Now I get it. So essentially, this whole museum that we're in is describing how the section of land that we're looking at and kind of like around was formed about 50 years ago. So they, what happened was there was a, a volcano which was under the water, which they knew was there, but wasn't actually active at the time. And then about 50 years ago, it started bubbling. And you could actually, there's some photos of the, of the surface of the water kind of like really uh, disrupted and gaseous. And then slowly over time, after eruption and eruption and eruption, it's formed this landmass and kind of just extended the peninsula out. So as you can see behind me, these kind of show the progression. So it goes from like, no, no landmass, slowly kind of pushing up dirt and volcanic rock all the way through to the fact that now we've got this whole situation of like a peninsula which is stuck out. But yeah, and that's kind of how this landmass is formed. So it's all kind of just over time, layer upon layer upon layer, created this amazing landscape only 63 years ago. Crazy, it's beautiful, and it's so it stands out from the rest of the island from being luscious and green, which is all fertile plants everywhere and really subtropical, to this kind of like barren, like Mars landscape. Back 
they black blue? Oof. It's uh, overwhelming and breathtaking. But mostly just really, really cool. I've never been anywhere where I've seen land that's this new. So it's like a whole new huge mountain. I mean, it, it happened when my parents were born. So it's, I don't know, it really puts into perspective how these things actually work because you hear about them and you know how they work. But to kind of see it firsthand like this, it makes it really, really real. And I guess in a way you always think that the earth is the way that it is, like all of these mountains and everything, all these islands have already been formed, but earth is still doing its thing. And at any moment it could just happen again, you know? We had a pretty sick day. But it was really cool to see the different processes and how the islands were formed and amazing what Mother Nature can do over a long period of time. Went for a little swim afterwards. <laughs> Had our feet cleaned by some uh, sardines? No. <laughs> shrimpies. We had shrimpies all over our feet. I think it's like half past nine or nine o'clock. And that sun's still burning. You gotta love summer up in Europe. It's just like endless amounts of time and time and time and time in the day. Shut up. Come on, you've been filming for like 20 minutes, bro. <laughs> The peninsula we just learned about came from an eruption less than a hundred years ago. Mount Pico, on the other hand, is from around 6,000 years ago, which in geological scale is still very young. Pico is an incredible sight, rising up from sea level to nearly 8,000 feet into the clouds. Our mission was not only to climb to the peak the following day, but spend the entire night in the crater. What are you doing, Sion? Just prepping my flesh wound. <laughs> I was having lots of fun, and then I should have called it quits when I was tired. <laughs> <laughs> just, just prepping your flesh wound for a big overnight hike. For overnight hike, yeah. Um, but it's pretty much got everything packed. Going to be carrying some food. Going to be operating the GoPros. I'm preparing dinner and I have all breakfast, snacks. What are you working on, Brady? Um. Wah, wah. Let me just think. Uh, what am I doing? I'm kind of just laying out stuff on the dock, making sure everyone's happy. No, I'm kidding. I can't do crew morale. I'm stressing out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what did you do with my sunglasses, Ruben? See? See, I can't do this. I'm, I'm, I'm breaking down. <laughs> Okay, right. we're just getting ready to go. Everyone's nearly there. Does everyone have a bandana and tall socks? Yeah, you need tall socks. So the fun thing about leaving Delos, the fun thing, is that we always have to bring a lot of stuff with us. Because not only do we need our things to go camping, but we also need all of our camera gear, which is super uh, heavy and we have a lot of different cameras and things going on in that end of things. So we're basically bringing a whole production studio with us always. So it's very interesting to travel off the boat. ready to roll. He's just going to explain how the GPS trackers work and then I think we can go up. Uh, it's 30 euros per person including a fee to stay overnight on top. The guy's in there real funny. He told me that there's no pizza store on top and he also told me that uh, he needed our names and passport numbers to return the bodies mm. once they find them. But we're just waiting a couple more minutes. We're going to go up there and he's going to explain to us 
all of the information. We each get a GPS tracker. Oh, they, each of us individually. Each of us individually, and they know exactly where we are on the mountain at all times, and they can even call us on the GPS tracker. There's like a speaker and a button on it. What? Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> these are the GPSs for tracking positions, so we know where you are in case of emergency. They also work as a phone. You can contact us by pressing this button, hold it until it vibrates. When it vibrates, leave the button, it will do the call to us. Okay, you thank you. All right, let's take bets. How long is it going to take? Uh, six hours. It's 3.4 kilometers and about 1,100 meters of elevation. We take long because we stop and film, but I'm going to say six hours to get to the top. This is my favorite stretch. This is a really good hamstring stretch. I highly recommend it. Oh, I guess you're really good. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Ready? What, what, what are we doing? What's our? Mm, oh, oh, oh. Uh, no. So I just hiked the first mile, it took me just under an hour. The first mile plus 1,146 feet of elevation gain. So it's definitely a solid mission to hike up this. There's parts of the trail that are actual trail and there's a lot that's just kind of rocks and you're literally crawling on your hands and knees. So it's, uh, it's really fun but it's really beautiful. The landscape's varying a lot and there's kind of these little bonsai trees and then all these spots where you can see the lava's flowed down and where it's stopped and kind of wrinkled up and all these lava tubes. And then it's really beautiful too because all along the side of the, of the volcano, there's these mini craters sort of, and you can see that at one point they were kind of whew, spewing up lava as well. So absolutely gorgeous. And the cloud cover's filling in. Check out this view, pretty spectacular. But I'm just gonna chill here and wait for the rest of the crew. Man, as remote as we are, we just looked up and saw this camera panning right at us. It's kind of weird. I guess it's for safety. I mean, they have over 200 people climbing this mountain a day. But how weird is this? It's like moving around and looking at me right now. Oh, I don't like it. That is weird thing to see, right? Yeah, I would never have imagined they'd have cameras. GPS is one thing. Wow. Okay. one last little peak to conquer and it's the actual summit of the mountain and almost at the top is this weird fully active zone where there's just hot steam pouring out of the rocks like really hot steam This is it. So it wasn't that bad. Four hours to get here. So cool. I thought it was further. Yeah. But yeah, it seems like we're at the top. Which is pretty cool. I was ready to go like double the distance. Yeah.
think this is the highest point in Portugal and the highest point in the Mid-Atlantic out of all the Mid-Atlantic islands. So we're up here. <laughs> you can see it. We're just so far high above the clouds and it's stunning. What do you think, Blue? I think it's pretty gorgeous. <laughs> it's insane. So we have about <laughs> some amount of time, 30 minutes before the sunset or something. So we need to hike back out of the crater. Um, so we can see the clouds and the sun going down over fire. So let's do it. Go, 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 go. Phew! Holy! Have you ever seen a sunset over the clouds before? Insane. Worth it. Like that effort was nothing in comparison. Like what could you go through just to see this, bro? This is awesome. Wow. Look at the mountain. <laughs> wow, that is like a perfect pyramid, dude. I've never in the seen sky. that in my life. I know. Shadow. Yeah. Yeah. So why, why are you setting up the camera for me, Brady? I want to try and get. I'm gonna try and get the shadow of the mountain yeah. shooting away and the moon rising at the same time because we were lucky enough to be here on full moon. How are you feeling? Are you comfy? So comfy, man. I've got some sharp rock in my bum right now. <laughs> but when, when I roll over, it goes away, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah. How's the space living in here with your parents? <laughs> this is this is tight quarters. More it. tight quarters than a boat. <laughs> I love that. We're like, hey, let's go out. Let's get off the boat. <laughs> we get into a small space together. <laughs> right? We're the happy family in tent number two. Somehow, the new couple got their own tent. Yeah, because we're cool parents. That, we're cool parents that let the teenagers go hook up even though we know they're hooking up. Yeah, we're cool parents and we're letting the teenagers hook up in their own tent on top of Volcano. <laughs> and baby brother has oh, to baby stay. Brother. And baby brother has to stay with mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, lights out. Yeah. Good night. Good night. How do I turn it off? I'm warm though, which is good. I have to go okay. Good night, everybody. Good night. Mm. Ah. Mm. Morning everyone. Moon is still up and we're getting up to walk up this other little mountain to see sunrise. Holy! Last night wasn't an enjoyable night. <laughs> it was so freaking cold, dude. How was your sleep, Brady? Well, it was the worst I've ever had, maybe. <laughs> Dude, my pillow is a drone case. <laughs> Sucks. My legs are cold. <laughs> okay, you guys ready to hike? Mm, yeah. yeah. Yeah, super ready. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> so how's your beautiful night? Did you enjoy your night in the wildness? Amazing. Super busy in these two. Why are you having your mouth? Cookie. Cookie. <laughs> How's your name, buddy? This sucks. <laughs> it's cold and rocky. <laughs> Welcome to camping. <laughs> Holy. 
holy mother of oh, oh my god I have never seen a colour like that in my life Whoa. Think about that bro, as I say It's incredibly peaceful though Just ass in, in the clouds, in the sky, in the sand, the land, in the mountain. Now we have to pack back up all of our stuff, take the tents down, and then walk back downhill. So it's a whole, what is it, what do we do, like a thousand meters? All downhill. A thousand meters? Oh yeah, yeah. No, it was even more than that. Just to save it. Okay, 1,100. It's far, straight down on loose lava rocks. Yay! With big backpacks on. Yeah. yeah. But we're gonna put the cameras away, and I think go into the zone and just mission down. I've got to put my music on and just, just find the rhythm. Cool. Yeah. Sweet. Find feel the, rhythm. the rhythm. Feel, feel the, the rhythm. Ride. Feel the ride. <laughs> feel, feel the rhythm. Feel the rhythm. Feel the ride. Feel the ride. Get on up. It's bobsled time. Get on up. It's bobsled time. Cool running. Cool running. <laughs> We made it down to the bottom and everyone's crashed hard. Well, I'm speaking for myself, I've crashed really hard. Team high five. One, two, two three. With all the hiking and adventures lately, we really haven't been putting much love into Delos. So the next week was all about boat work. Happy Friday, Blue. Happy Friday. The kids have left us today. They went on a little surfing mission and there's a bit of waves, so they took off early this morning. It doesn't make it easy. The other piece of my heart so somewhere in the grave. We're at the dock here in Fial and I'm going to get into the engine room today because there seems to be a leak on the high pressure pump on the water maker and I don't know where it's coming from but I ordered the seals. The first thing is to turn the water maker on and just have a really good look of where it's leaking from. pump for the uh, fresh water maker. This whole thing? Yeah, this is the motor itself and this is the actual pump. It pulls in salt water into this intake here and then it turns it into super high pressure. It goes through these membranes that are in the engine room and then comes back through this pump and then goes into the... I don't know if it comes back through this pump actually. I think it just goes high pressure out of this pump through the membranes then into the tank. So the leak is a, is a salt water leak. This is where the salt water comes in and this is like two pieces of metal that come together and inside here there's a bunch of gaskets and seals and that's where it's leaking from. So see all the corrosion? The salt water is just dripping out. We have to get this off and then that kit that I ordered is the seal kit for this. Do you know what you're doing? You're just kind of winging it. No, I'm just winging it. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, baby. I know where the leak is and I'm just slowly taking stuff apart and then making a plan as I go. Cool. Good job. It's working so far. Nothing else is broken. So. <laughs> So 
so at first I thought we got the wrong seal kit, but I just didn't look good enough <laughs> at what was going on. But anyways, it is the right seal kit, which is good. These are the old seals that came out of this half of the manifold of the pump, and they're all pretty rusty and corroded. They're, they're still working, but these O-rings have been smushed down to nothing, and a lot of the O-rings are actually broken. But I actually don't think any of this stuff was leaking. What was leaking was when, when the seals are inside here, this half of the manifold goes on like this. And so this is this is like the, what the new seals look like. So that's gonna go down into here. So basically that's gonna be sitting down in there. And then when this goes and connects to the other half, this part here sits like that against there. And you see those divots in there? Mm -hmm. that are right on where this seal seats onto this part of the manifold. It doesn't, it's not creating a, a perfect seal right there. I thought the kit would come with uh, a spacer or o-ring to replace this inner black part, but it didn't. So I don't know if that is supposed to come out and be replaced or because that might help fill the gap. But I guess either way, I can use some like gasket maker, like red high temp silicone or something, and put it all around here. And then when I put that together, screw it on real tight and it should fill up those gaps. Yeah, all the new seals are in, all the O-rings are in. There's no replacement for these. There's like seats, they're not O-rings, so I think it's just, yeah, one whole unit you'd have to buy for each one of those, but. Everything that we could change, we would change. And now it's time to put it all back together and put some red gasket maker, like some high temp silicone on it. Bolt it together, put it in, turn it on, and she won't not leak. Get it closed. Okay, cool. What's going on out here today? Yeah, nice little rainy day. Good day to do some engine work for sure. Engine room work. Um, yeah, basically we put the valves back together, put the new O-rings and washers in because it was leaking outside there. So that's clean. Everything's nice and prepped and ready down there. So yeah, I just lift it in, put it in, connect everything up and start it up and see if we got a leak, which we shouldn't. So. to make a lasagna and we don't have enough fresh veggies so I'm just gonna make some uh, eggplant parmesan, uh, sweet potato, you know, grill stuff. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this one so something. <laughs> Who'd you learn how to cook from? My mom. Yeah I work in restaurants and I live with people and you get a little bit from everyone right but my mom is a big one. She's awesome. She's the master barbecue. She's like a bad, she's with the fire, she's one with the fire. Like usually in Argentina is the man makes the fire, but my, my mom makes the fire. My mom was for the barbecue and my dad cut the bread. <laughs> What's up? What's up? Welcome to the edit station. It's a nice space, you have a lot of room right here. Brady, Brady had like a cleaning mode. Mm. Brady was just like running on the bed like can I take this from you? I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> so you're editing Delos stuff. Yeah. How's this, that? This is the episode that we arrived on. It's cool. It's hard. It's really hard work, man. I have never like edited this um, this amount of footage. As a viewer in the past, I never quite appreciated how much work goes into these. And now I'm doing it. I'm like, oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> Editing's fun. When you get to like this, there's a certain point where it kind of tips over and you start getting more creative and you get into like a flow and you understand how you can kind of tell the story better and kind of portray different emotions and again there's little satisf satisfying things that take place. It's hard work and it's draining because you're sitting down all day and I find that difficult and then the second thing which is draining about it is like it's just time. You just got to sit and give a lot and lot, a lot of time to it. I mean if you, yeah, I think if you're making 10 minute videos it'd be easier but then it wouldn't be the same. But a half an hour thing is like a oh, complex storyline to make sure that it's entertaining and to maintain someone's interest in 30 minutes is a challenge especially every week 
<laughs> this is crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, it's really pre impressive. How are you today, Sion? Phone call. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, what's up? Okay. Yeah, 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 that's good. The other day, well, a while ago, before we left from Pompano Beach, I found a crack in the bottom of one of our stanchions. It's stainless steel, and of course we didn't have time to get it welded or find anybody to weld it. And our neighbor, Paul, happens to have a welder on board, and he has some stainless steel rods. And I've never welded before in my life, but of course the South African that does it all knows how to weld pretty well, apparently. We're gonna see. We're gonna shut off the power to the boat to be safe for any grounding issues. Plug in the welder and a couple of zaps and it should be good. Oh, because the the whole stanchion and lifeline is grounded back to the batteries and back down to the keel, I'm going to shut off the whole power to the boat and disconnect the batteries so that way there's no chance of any stray current going in and damaging anything that's connected. I don't know uh, if that's an issue or not, but it's better just to be safe and just to totally isolate the batteries from the whole boat. Shut the boat down. Yep. Water's off. The fan's going off. Oh, the fans are off as well. Fans off. Uh, Not for long. Batteries off. Do it again. So can you explain to me, knowing nothing about welding and never doing it before, what's yeah. the process and how does it work? Yeah, the process is basically, we're gonna be melting metal to high bridge. And what we need to do is create a complete circuit between where we're gonna be putting the stick. We're using just normal arc welding now with a stick, with the 316 uh, rod. And yeah, the welding process is basically we melting, you'll see the rod has got um, some components wrapped around the stainless steel rod. And now what happens with that, as soon as you arc it, those metals that are around it burn and create a sterile environment for the rod to burn and basically adhere themselves to stainless steel. So you're basically here. just short circuiting something you're and short creating heat. So I mean creating heat and melting the metal and then basically melting those two That's together. a lot of current to melt metal. When setting things up like this, power is on. You do not want to touch the two together. No. Uh, so you're going to put all of that inside of yourself. So oh, that sucks. That guy goes in. Watch out for the wind. Yeah, watch out for the wind. Looks a bit messy, Sion. Work great. I uh, just finished, now we're just gonna clean it up. <laughs> Thank you. Well removed. There you go, I like the hat. <laughs> Crack, no more. Nice. Well, that was a long episode, Delos Tribe. If you're still with us, head to svdelos.com forward slash shop and use the discount code EP254 and get 20% off anything you like. Up next on Delos, I have a dream come true and get to experience a flying dinghy. This is blowing my mind. Why? The sound in here is so crazy. Like every single sound you can hear crisp and clear and it echoes. Can you give me your 
your best stretch? I mean, for a hike like this, this is the only one I recommend. <laughs> What's it called, bro? The one-legged woodchopper. Sean looks like a Sherpa. <laughs> We're a homeless man. <laughs> You I've, can't li compare. I've been living on this mountain for 20 compare, years. You can't compare shepherds to homeless people. That's pretty wrong. Right, give us a new end screen for the like, subscribe, ad. Ads. Hey, you ever want to go sailing, but really not want to leave your couch? Turn on to sdtaylors.com and come along for the ride. Mm, I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. Exactly.